Hello everyone. Hi guys. Uh, 243, 244, as usual, who knows. Yeah. Um, did, did you so, put the repel in, No, I did not, because that way I get the machine. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trick of mine. Yeah, it's a couple's technique. If she gets the anti-mosquito, I don't, therefore they come to me and not to her, and then she's safe. There you go. Um, I have two podcasts in a row uh, that I find extremely interesting that we're going to talk about. Today we're going to do game theory, mm -hmm. and next week... That's a big one. We're going to talk uh, vasopressin versus oxytocin, and is it gender-based? Uh, so, uh, men versus women. What is oxytocin? It's a bonding agent. So, is the is it the same bonding agent for uh, socially for men and women? Right. Turns out it's not. So that's I'll talk about it next week. This week we're going to do game theory, not gaming theory, but game theory because yeah. I believe uh, it's a uh, we're going to talk about that, but it's about strategy. <clears throat> and it seems like from the universe to a simple to training, it obeys the same strategy. So I find that uh, really interesting. So what is game theory? So that's that thing started. Um, I mean, it's always been around, but it was actually tested through computers as a strategy game. What is that, 40 years ago, something like that? Anyway, 40, 50 years ago. So. The game is simple. You have um, two people, right? And um, each can see the result of the other, right? And so what is the game? Uh, you can raise a green flag or you can raise a red flag. If both of you raise a green flag, right? You don't, you don't know uh, who does it first. You just you both do it and then you see the result of that. If both of you raise a green flag, you get three points. If both of you raise a red flag, you get one point. If one of you raises a red, uh, green flag and a red flag, whoever raised the green flag gets zero points. Whoever gets the red flag gets five points. So, again, two green, three points. Two red, one point. One green, one red. Red wins. Red wins everything. Five points, you get zero. So... <laughs> like right away, you know, it's the like, um, do you want your neighbor to do better than you? It's literally the, the point of the game mm -hmm. because it's... And, and it's good to add that they don't add before the game starts how many rounds no, are there. No, that we're going to come oh, to okay. after because that matters a lot. Yeah. But that's a point I want to make toward the end, oh, which is objective I'll, I'll just versus... Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a very good point, but like, let me just yeah, get to that so it's exciting when no, I talk no, about yeah, it because yeah. you just ruined my entire <laughs> setup. I had like a one, two, three, four, five, and then at the end I go, and one of the most important things, and you just destroyed it. So there you go. Thank you, honey. Like, it's not like I've been spending the last week thinking about how I was going to say it. Huh? So Thank you, sorry. honey. That's great. Great host. Thank, so Thank you. Thank you. No, you, you I destroyed never my... thought that podcast is a good format for me. That's yeah, based whatever. purely no, just... on what I say. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. I suppose it's a weakness. It's anyway. It's weakness. Right. So um, let's, go, let's go back to the game. So what would you do so again if you both raise green yes you get you get more but if he raises red and it's two things it's not even that you get zero is that he gets five yeah he gets so your high, coins high, oh. this is how, is how you work basically right not exactly because it's based about a an long and untold <laughs> number of uh, of tries but the point was the way the um, it was set up as a tournament where people would come up with different uh, strategies. So the first tournament had 60, I believe 67, 65, 67 strategies. And we would, because the point was most people assume, because that's what we're all thinking, well, then everybody's going to raise a red flag. Because what would you want to lose? Worse, what would you want to lose over the other one winning? So every time you see um, the point, what we all thought the strategy was is I start with green, I see red, the guy fucked me over because I did green, he did red, he gets all my points, and then it's red from down. And so uh, over, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the number of choice, but basically at the end we total the points and we see which had the strongest strategy. And amazingly, like the, the strategy of the green flag raised toward the top of the red flag actually raised toward the bottom, like the all red flags actually did, did very poorly. And all green flags did okay, but that wasn't the best. So it turned out 
um, that the best strategy was a tit for tat. So, but that was based on a few very important points. Um, the first point was you always want to start with a green flag, because it was he said because remember, you have to understand what game theory is about. Yeah. It's a relationship with the other because you're going to see every time what the result is. So most people, I say, only red are thinking about their strategy. Yeah. But turns out, not thinking about the other person screws you up in the long yeah. run. So it's a short-term strategy. So with with this this game, they tried like uh, a number of uh, like over uh, sixty strategies. Six, over yep. sixty strategies, and the one that that ended up being the most successful yeah. was tit for tat. And right. tit for tat basically means that uh, you it was based on. But it was it was more than tit for tat. It was based on four important points because yeah. after that there's another tournament where they took the same strategy put them into over 200 strategies based on what we knew from the first one yeah. and tit for tat still won yeah so he was showing that it was truly the, the right strategy so what was it so one was you always start as a green as a green flag because if you start as a red flag you set up the relationship with the other a certain way and then that is not a winning strategy so what we saw is a red flag is a, a short-term mentality mm -hmm. it's like whatever is better for me it's a bit like chess it's not enough to have a plan. You have to understand what the what the adversary's plan is. And since this game is based is a strategy game based on a relationship, we saw right away how to get m uh, mutually uh, benefiting strategies. So it turns out the first one is always start as a green flag, right? The second point, which I thought was extremely important, was the second he raises red flag, you have to retaliate. So you can't be a pushover. The one that did all green flags did not do well at all because they got taken advantage of. Yeah. And in the long run, once the, the other one understood there was no consequence to their actions, then they just piled on the green flag. And then he ended up, losing. actually ended up still having more points than the all red flags. But still, the, the more they went on, the more the other adjusted their strategy on the second tournament and the worse they did. So that tells you the second point is, yes, you start as a nice gesture but you cannot be a pushover. In the long run, it kills you. So what tit for tat was, the second the other guy raises a red flag, on the next um, round, you have to raise a red flag, right? In order to show that, okay, I saw, I saw what you did, I'm gonna do the same. So that's why it's called a tit for tat strategy. But the third point of the strategy that I thought was fascinating is that you have to forgive. Which means, no, you don't raise a red flag, and now it's red flag from now on, because now you're bitter, about the fact that the person took advantage of you and your response is going to be to be red flag all the way because fuck you. You know what happens with that? You don't win. So the point of the cheat for that was you react right away, don't be a pushover, but then forgive, which means he gives you a red flag, you give a red flag, but then you go back to green flag. And every time he gives you a red flag, you give a red flag back, but then you go back to, uh, to green. So the point was not to be Mr. Nice Guy. The point was not not to be a pushover, mm -hmm. and so it was to be a good guy, not a nice guy. Yeah, which means yeah. You are forgiving every time. Every time you come back, so who won is the bigger person. But the bigger person does not mean you're a pushover because that doesn't work either. Yeah. So that and that was that balance that I think all of us find so hard in life. Yeah, because to give a little bit of a context to this experiment, if you. Yeah, oh, it was. It was. It was an experience. It, it is really like a strategy, and it's not just specifically towards one thing. It is really towards politics, towards uh, training, towards That's what we're gonna life, get into. towards. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Am I am I doing it again? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Towards towards a bunch of things. Actually, in a way, it's an approach to life, generally speaking. And if you see, you can you can apply it to, for example, well, politics very easily. Apply right? it to right now. Yeah, right to so, right now. So you look at what is uh, everything that is happening and what you see is that, yes, a country has to retaliate against the other, but then he has to stop. He has to forgive. He has to forgive and move on. Yeah. Because, again, you have to be the... What, what that strategy was showing is that you have to be the bigger person because yeah. otherwise you wanna all end up in red, which gives you one point. Yeah. So what was interesting with strategy was the fourth point. There's actually a fist, but that was the guy ruined already. Um, <laughs> the fourth point was uh, be clear in your strategy. Yeah. So some on the second tournament, they came with strategies that were more like advanced and everything they didn't work either. Like, for example, you retaliate, but then you retaliate twice. Nah, what worked the best is he does something, I do the same. 
because then it's predictable for the other person like they know what right. they're and that was the point is it's not enough to have a plan the other has to understand the plan and that uh, that's a very good point yeah. the other person that you're Needs playing against or plan. playing with right. has to understand so the your strategy plan. is not is not just you yeah it's not the just strategy your intent, is yeah. toward the other In a way, so yeah. you have to adjust your plan so that the other person understands yeah. it otherwise so being right has no, no meaning yeah. here it's not just your plan it's our plan so yeah. if the other one and you see that in relationship like yeah. couples and everything if the other one doesn't understand the plan then it doesn't matter yeah that's true but if they don't understand the strategy they can't play the game yeah no exactly and they're not in, they're not understanding what it is that you're doing right. so. so you had to be a good guy not nice guy good guy retaliate which means don't be a pushover uh forgiving right away yeah. and clear yeah and those were the values that lead you to winning. You have to understand also this is, and we're going to get to the fifth point, but this is a, what are morals? Morals are the best strategy within the society for said society to move forward. Yeah. Well, and you can even argue that this is, um, this is how religion in a way works as well, right? Like the... So that's what they're trying to teach you first, be a good guy, yeah. not a nice guy, because they don't win either. Be a good guy, which means green first. Be nice. Yeah, be nice green generally. Yeah, be, be a nice So person. green first. Don't be a pushover. The second they hit, you hit back. But then forgive. Yeah. Right? And be clear, which is the male friendship. Yeah. We, uh, I don't know the guy, we fight, jutsu or full bond, then we go get a beer, and then we're friends for life. We all know that's how this works. <laughs> all trained together now, since we can't fight anymore. But it's a lot of people have found that, like, you know, um, they don't like each other, they clear the air through fighting, they go get a beer, solve the, the hierarchy, which is be clear about the strategy, and then everything moves forward from there. Then everybody wins. But the co so people will either find hard to retaliate, as your, those are your non-confrontational, or to forgive, those yeah. are your confrontational. Yeah, exactly. And it turns out it's an arch between the two. Yeah. There's a balance to have between all this. It's an arch. It's a <laughs> Right. So Somewhere since, the French accent says. Since we're going to go into the strong fit principles. I well, let's, let's go over the fifth point first. I'm that's very what I'm curious. Saying. That's, that's what I was going oh, into. So, Jesus, okay. I am yeah. not You're on good today, yeah. at yeah. this. No, 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 it's just because today. because I, I did some air dye sprints before that. Yeah, right. Yesterday, so yeah. it was last week, it was a medication. This week, I'm going to play. Can I talk them. about the okay. fifth point? Okay. So, it was so pressing. That's next week. Um, which is funny because that's what's happening. Anyway. Uh, I will explain her behavior next week on the podcast, and you'll see if it's Keep to going. It's not about oh, me. Oh, now we're going on the fifth point. It's funny how that works. It's not right? about me. So what was very interesting about that game is that um, one of the constraints of the game is there was a number of tries, but it was not known. The second the players, computer and accents, but knew the number of games, he ruined everything. Why? Because let's say I have 200 tries. Well, on the, on the 200th try, you're going to go red flag. Yeah. Because might as well go for broke, right? Yeah, but the problem is that since you both know, because that's always the thing, is what a, it's not enough to think, what would I do? Is what, what is he going to do? So if you assume he's too stupid, he's necessarily going to go green, then that's on you because the other person might be just as smart as you are yeah. or smarter. So that's where ego comes in. But so at 200 they both play green uh both play red obviously but so it becomes a game about the 199th so if you think about it like that you're going to go red and before you know it it's all red and we go back to square one so uh, that was one of the golden nuggets i don't think anybody paid attention to in that tournament because it defined the idea of objective versus constraint which is exactly what i've been talking about so long that the second you have a number of tries that is known it becomes an objective how do I win this? It becomes a short-term mentality. And if you see the second you go to short-term mentality, you have a greedy mindset of whatever is better for me. You forget the overall plan and you end up getting less. Does that sound like your training? Yeah. Right? You know, like you want that five kilo PR. Yeah, you're going to get it, but at the expense of the 20 kilo gain over a year. So that's always been my problem when I talk about the 35 pounds per year. And people are like, I want, I want 50 this year. If I say 35, they say I want 50. But because it has nothing to do, the person does not have a strategy. That's a want, that's ego talking. Oh, 35 is nothing. I can easily get 50. Go. But the problem is 35 a year in two years is 70. You get 50 
the first year, you get 10 or zero the second year because you're going to quit, because you got hurt, you got burnout. You're like, oh, I don't feel like doing it anymore. No, you just quit. Let's be honest. That's what I was saying. Like, boredom is just a way of quitting. People get, get 40, 45 pounds on the first year. You'll see, I could do more. And then the second year, they quit. Why? Because, for example, for Janina, I only let her do 96% on average in competition. 97. I don't make her do 100. You know why? Because if I do that, the competition after that is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, and we see... And she's going to think about it, too. Yeah, we see that with our clients all the time. It's like they, they get, like, after a certain amount of time, they get greedy for that that weight that they go, are going to go up, and they're either going to get... They either hurt themselves, or they get so, like, stuck on that number that now the next week is going to be harder, and the next week is going to be harder. you cash like, in the credit card. Yeah, you cash in the credit card, and, and so it's it, an extremely term, dangerous yeah, 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 game, but it's, a, it's no, not but it's sustainable. A, it's just a very short-term mentality. Yeah which is the problem with objective base. It's, it's short term. Short term means what? Means at the expense of everything else. And so it's never sustainable, as we saw in the game theory. Yeah. That is not a, system, a sustainable way. So what you have to do then is when you prep for a competition is have a short term mentality while keeping your mind on the long yeah. term, which means in competition, 95, 96% of your maxes are what we're doing. Why? Because you go, oh, that was easy. It wasn't. It's still going to take you two, three weeks to recover. But mentally, go, oh, I had more. Good. Now you want to do the next one. Yeah. And it's really uh, a, a skill to train balance, to train yeah. thinking in an arch. It's it's pushing today, but also knowing that next year... Tomorrow exists. Tomorrow, tomorrow exists, really, but also the next six months exist, the next five years exist. Like, right. it really... You, you, in a way, it's easy to, to be greedy and to be short term. It's easy because but at the end, it's, it's easy to not forgive. Yeah. Because that's what I want to. I want to apply that to training. What you're doing with a competition when you get you want at 50 pounds and you want to say fuck you, I can prove to you that I'm better than this. Right. That's raising a red flag. That's confrontational. So right away, instead of going like, okay, so what is the plan? What is my body saying? Not with me, by the way, with yourself. It's like, yeah, but I want that. At, you know, like, I don't care. I'm going to get that number. The second you say you don't care, you're on the red side. And so, yeah, short term is going to work. And then he won't. And then when it doesn't work anymore, you're going to quit. Because you now you can take a step back because now you're stuck into the wrong strategy. Because the way out of that strategy requires you to forgive yourself and go like, all right, what is my body saying? But... At the same time, well, so and this is what we see on the other side it, with the emotional mapping and people going towards self-indulgence and emotional this, emotional that, is you became a pushover. Yeah. You can't retaliate anymore. Yeah. So imagine if we take the game theory, we're going to play it and you as your, versus your nervous system. Well, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's exploration versus, versus explo exploitation. Exactly. So now... Sorry, I have such a hard word, time with that word. Exploration versus exploitation. Motivation. You want to make the podcast about that? Okay, so that's my revenge. Like this is going to be old podcast because you destroyed my face point. So now, exactly. You remember forgiving? <laughs> <laughs> Retaliate and forgiving. I just retaliated, so now forgiving. Yeah, yeah now we're exactly. Going. So exactly. that's not the entire podcast because no. now you retaliated. Well, we did you define actually, how long actually you, you, retaliate, you retaliated twice because you told me in the moment, you reminded me, and actually is, that's kind of like a third time if you keep No, track. I disagree. So forgiving. No, no, no. We did not associate the amount of time that retaliation counts as. Oh, now anyway. we're going to go into like uh, no, no, Those details. are complexities. Don't worry about it. Now uh, we're going to go and like we're going to try to turn the table towards your hand. Is that a Dutch expression? That sounds like one. I don't even know, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just anyway. making something up right now. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a Dutch thing. Um, Anyhow. Anyway, so... Forgiving, sweetie. So you... <laughs> <laughs> you forgiving. Be, yeah, a, be, be a good man. No, be a better man. Yeah, be I a mean, better person. Yeah, exactly. I do that all day. So self I do that every day. So no, yeah. but like this is just a better strategy. Yeah. No, Think yeah, long Be a better turn. person than don't you. Don't be greedy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, let's put that into you versus your nervous system. So, for example, the uh, green flag means what? Means that you have to be able to listen, first of all, which means you go into a training session. Where am I today? So, we talked about the state all the time, right? Like, you know, having the, the, the emojis per day, like, are you on a heavy day or are you on a volume day? For example, you have to be able to go in a session and go like, okay, where am I, right? Okay. That's the 
green flag. You can't just impose your will on your body long term. Short term you can, but not long term. Again, we, those are the two different strategies, right? Um, you're not going to impose that. It's okay, so where I'm at today, so for example, you have a plan, you have a template, then you adjust it every time, which means you go into the training going like, is this a day for heavy, for example, or is this a day for volume? And we're going to go into that, bless you. So now, retaliate means what? Means, for example, you go into a training, this is heavy, and you had five reps, but you quit at three. And you didn't quit because you're, you're tired, you didn't quit because you just push it out. Like, uh, you were not in a good mood, you like you're, you really wanted it, but you're, you know, like one of those sessions where the body just doesn't go there. And it didn't go the way you wanted. Right, so you cannot leave it at that. That's a failure that cannot stay. So that means that the, my next session, I'm going to kill myself. To teach my nervous system a lesson. Honestly, going like, no, 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 no. We're not doing this. We are not weak. We are not quitting. If there's a workout to be done, then it has to be done. It's like, you know, you don't fight when you feel like it. When you fight a gorilla, you don't stop when you feel like it. You stop when the gorilla feels like it, type of thing. Or in Dune, remember when uh, Gurney Halleck teaches Paul at mm -hmm. and tells him, like, uh, fighting is not a matter of mood. You have to teach that to your nervous system, right? So one time, if, if I felt like I didn't give my best on that session, all right, the next session, we're going to bring the sled. And then we're going to have to look at ourselves in the mirror, but I'm not losing this. That was the Saturday for me. Is every Saturday, because of course I fucked up somewhere in that week, the training wasn't good. He was like, all right, I reminded myself every Saturday that probably too much, by the way. But I reminded myself that no, this is the direction we're going in. Yeah. We are not them, <laughs> we are us, and we do this. And and I, what I uh, personally really got out of like training that way is that it becomes a habit, you know, it becomes a habit of your life, it becomes a habit of your training. It becomes like, a strategy. It be yes, it becomes like that, the, the, if you do that long enough, at some point you don't quit at three, even though you yes, every exactly. fiber of your body wants to quit, you but don't. you don't, yeah. But that's because you establish the strategy. So the strategy is retaliate. No, we do not accept quitting. No, we do not accept giving our best on each session. Knowing it won't happen every session anyway, but that's the strategy. Now, most people who are good athletes or will go fairly far into a sport have that mentality, they head through a brick wall, which means retaliation is not a problem, right? They are very confrontational in nature when it comes to training, right? The problem is after, the forgiving part. Once you've done that session once, you've done it because your system betrayed you in a way, right? Yourself, you quit, you, not your system, you betrayed yourself. So you retaliate, which means you murder yourself on the next session. Okay, but now I guess what we're, we're, we're going back to? Listening to the right, system has to Right, that's a stay. very good point. Right. Most people, when they're in that, oh, I showed you, then then you go boost, he's like, see, I'm not a pussy. Yeah. I showed myself that I can do this. And now they're going to do it every session. No, now we're back on the red flags. That's true. Now you have to forgive yourself and go like, all right, so now that we are clear, strategy as to what our life is, which is pushing when we need to, because that's what I'm going to need in competition. I can go back and listen and to what we need my in life, body. really. Yeah, but after yeah. that, you have to listen to yourself and feel. You have to forgive. Yes. You fucked up a session. That's okay. Yeah. Like, you made, but, a, but you made a point. But that's also the longevity, because, like, the, your head through the brick wall is not longevity. Like, it just will right. not work but it's five yeah, years so, so that's why everything is an arch. Everything is, is, is a strategy in that sense. Is um, But you the, the problem also is you had to first confront the problem. Because too many problems, I see that with emotional mapping and then, like, find yourself and all that stuff. The problem is you find yourself, right. But at some point, you also have to be confrontational with yeah. yourself and go, no, I'm just quitting. Yeah. And that cannot be... So the problem is the that um, yeah, find yourself turns into self-indulgence, like we talked about, but that turns into quitting. Yeah. Because now you're raising the, the green flag no matter what. And as we see for game theory, you cannot green flag everything. No, you have to red flag and retaliate, yeah. but then forgive. My, my problem with the emotional mapping is just like, honestly, like I don't really fully understand it. Like maybe it's because I'm not intellectual <laughs> developed no, enough care, yeah. or that i don't know I, I honestly like i'm waiting for someone to explain to me in a way that i understand because i don't understand it. no you know what you don't understand is you do not give the value to emotions 
than uh, most people do. Yeah, I don't First of all, it's it. Asperger, and second of all, it's because you have a deep understanding of the fact that emotions lie. They do. They don't the just time. lie. By like, the way. what does it like? What does that even mean? Yeah, finding but, yourself. Don't like, go, you, yeah, but you can go the sense, other way either. Yeah, I know, not and, all emotions lie all the time. That's true. The, the but, problem is that emotions are questions. So that means in themselves, they don't lie or tell the truth. They're just asking a question that you're supposed to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the problem with emotional mapping and then finding yourself is that you're going to find answers where there are no questions. Because since emotions are questions, you're going to create emotions through workouts. So you are creating questions. Right. But if you create the question, that means you decide what the question is. So yeah. that means you already have the answer. Yeah. So that's why it turns into self-indulgence, because the only thing you're doing is asking yourself the question you have an answer for. The only questions that are interesting is the one you don't have an answer for. That's what Voltaire okay. was saying, is that you judge the intelligence of a man not by the answers he gives, but by the questions he asks. Actually, I think that will resonate with what you just said. That will, well, I think, will break down for people very well. You how, have to ask the questions to... you don't have an answer to. Yeah. And that's the problem with self-indulgence, with finding yourself, is... What I see is people asking questions they already have an answer to. Yeah. So if you see all their training, they make themselves either cry or find this or find that. I'm like, but that's easy. You already know that one. Yeah. And this is the reinforcing that that's society wise uh, of like, oh, my parents, my education, what happened to me, my past. Yeah. My past decides my future. Yeah, that, that I disagree with so much. It's like, a, one of the first things Carl Jung said is you are not your past. No, and you are also who you not, decide to be. Yeah, you're also not what happened to you. You, you are exactly how you said. deal with it. That's exactly what he... The Carl Jung, very early on, started to talk about that because he always... But that's nihilism in a way. And then that's also self-indulgence because it's easy. Because again, okay, any it's question... It's a mentality to me. And if it is, it is, but it understand why. Enough, right? No, 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 not even pushing. It is a victim mentality, but understand why. Because being a victim means you already have the answer to the question. Right. And who wants to ask questions they don't have an answer to? Yeah, it's, That's it's, difficult. It's, it's justification instead of uh, holding yourself accountable, I think. No, but sometimes. that's, that's why well, also yeah. he had such good phrases. He say like, uh, thinking is difficult. That's why most people judge. Yeah. That's what your stuff on the past is. You're judging your parents, those people, and everything for you. Because you don't think. That yeah. way you don't have to think. So that's the danger of, of not confront, confronting your uh, reaction to the fact that you quit. You know you quit. You know you did. So do something about it. Retaliate. But retaliate does not mean turning into a complete asshole that will then punish his body the rest of the time. That's not good either. Yeah, you that, see yeah, that a lot yeah. with people who lose yeah. weight. Yeah, that, that, no, I understand that that's the other extreme of it. Like, just like, only defining yourself through like, uh, things you accomplish for example or how much oh, no, money no, no, you make no 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 it goes much darker than that you see that with obese people they lose half their body weight and they still see themselves as fat as fat and sometimes they will keep punishing themselves for years squeezing the food even more not being able to accept the fact that they went from 400 pounds to 200 pounds which is amazing right they can't see that because they're still in that punishing phase because the punishing phase worked they retaliated. Yeah. That's why, by the way, time comes in because you spend really 20 years fear. getting fat, yeah. you, you lose two years, you lose the fat. Is that retaliation? Retaliation is going to come and then at a point you have to start listening to your body. That doesn't mean listening to your body. You go back to eating the way you used to. Hey, that's, stop, that's Kitty. Sorry. The dog loves, the dog loves Kitty and absolutely wants to play with her. Yes, go play. he absolutely wants to play with the cat. So now he has the zoomies, but the cat doesn't like it. Anyway, sorry. Um, we have an American bully that is completely in love with our Maine Coon and absolutely He's, wants to work yeah, with Yeah, it's a he love relationship from I one know. side. And she likes you. She's just she not as excited you. as you are. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a, there's a deep... The, the main thing of the strategy is that, is that arch between retaliation and forgiving. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing to do in life. So, sorry. And so, of course, now the other dog that is jealous jumps in the fray because he can't accept that the American bully is playing with the cat. Anyway, it's okay. Just get Paul, please. Love. Yeah, thank you. So that's you, the Katie. strategy right there. Is that So whenever you train, you have to be able to retaliate when the training didn't go your way, but then you let go of it. 
So the key really for me in that sense is, did you quit? If you did that the next training session, um, I don't care what you do, but it's going to have to hurt because you're going to have to prove. <laughs> this dog the, is, the dog just kicked the, the This dog is, is, Sorry. is, is just an un, yeah. So you're going to have this. You're going to have to uh, prove to your system that a mistake was made. No, do not let those quits accumulate. If you quit on a workout, um, steal yourself. Because I've seen that with the emotional side stuff where, you know, like you break in a workout and you try to analyze why you broke down. And then the next session is going to be going to the root of the, of the thing and everything is like, to the root of the problem or are you just trying to find another way to quit that without feeling bad about well, it? Well, and to me, it's like, what if you're wrong, though? Well, to, th that's the thing. It's like you're fucking with things. You have no clue what you're even doing. Yeah, and, it, and you, yeah. with like, if you apply it to your clients, like, what if you have someone who is really mentally not completely stable no, no, or they, has they, some but, really but, serious okay, things even that without you're touching? That, there's a layer before that because we're talking strategy. Like, you feel bad about quitting. Yes, you're supposed to. Yeah. That, yeah. So, no. The problem is at that moment, you feel bad about quitting. So now you have two choices. You can not you can keep on quitting, which is always green flags, by being a pushover to yourself and, and justifying it. It's very easy to justify raising the green flag while a red flag was raised. Oh, the other person is a bad person. Uh, they're taking advantage of me. It's very, That's a victim mentality. Is that's also a victim mentality. It's keeping it's when you keep raising the green flag, because you're not taking into account what the other did. So it's a victim mentality because it's a narcissistic, uh, narcissistic tendency strategy, which means doesn't matter what the other one does, I'm going to be a good person. No, and we see a lot of that right now in society. Like, oh, you go do whatever you want. Imagine if you yeah. tell your kid to be. That imagine if you have a kid and you always raise the green flag. Yeah. No matter well, what the kid does, oh, it's okay. It's good yeah. for you. I'm not a parent who's going to put my kid down. I want him to keep... You know what happens? The kid is going to end up in the hospital, in jail, or on drugs. Yeah. Because everybody needs limits. Everybody needs limits. A good parent is a parent that is caring, forgiving, but also strict. Because... You're going to make mistakes at 14. Some can be costly. Yeah. The job of a parent is, hey, no hospital, no blood, no blood, no jail. No hospital, no jail. Those are good rules, right? But that means that when your kid fucked up and he goes to hospital or jail, all right. So there has to be a reaction to that. If you always green all the time, it doesn't work. It's 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 actually a weakness it's, it's because it's very narcissistic. To the kid over time. It's a poor strategy. Like you understand what morals, everything is about strategy, right? Morals are simply the values that will work the best for society. Yeah. So we're talking the best strategy for society as a group. That's what morals are. And so what is the best uh, strategy? It's always the same. Be forgiving and yet not strict, but strong in those morals. We know what works better, then we stay with that, regardless of the consequences, but at the same time, we don't do it forever. We forgive, and then we open the door again, just like you would raise the kids. You made a mistake, a price has to be paid, but then after, it's gone. Like, all right, fine, now we start from scratch. So every time you start, the point is every time you start from scratch, but after you're retaliated. So most people, when they're in the victim, victim mentality in that sense, they won't retaliate and then start from scratch. They go, oh, you raise a red flag, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, we start from scratch. Uh-uh. Saying so, say, making the person telling you they're sorry, that's not retaliating. Because you're not, you don't have a clear strategy. Yeah. If you do that, think about the other person. What do they think? What is the strategy? Yeah, and it, it's also like there's an action involved with that. Like just using words is, is not enough. Like you need to, you well, can't tell yourself like, listen, next time you really shouldn't quit on the third right, reps. Exactly. Like you shouldn't do that. Like I, we, we, we are better than it. We are strong. Yes. We are, we can't do that. No, no. no. There has to be retaliation. It has to be like, so, yes, there has you to have be an to action. have a physical reality right. to so it as well, right? So what is that? Right? Is you're going to take this sled and then you're going to kill yourself and then you're going to do one more. That's a Q plus one. Yeah. That's where I use it. It's like, all right, as a retaliation, you're going to kill until you can't move and you do one more set, which I've done in seminars again, to teach you to go, no, you go there. But then 
there's a point to that. Then we go back to listening what the body says. Yeah. That was the that's the point, right? Yeah. And so take I find it. the forgiving part very interesting. It it, it can apply mm-hmm. to be so many things to even to to the relationship with, with yourself or yes. other things do other people do something towards you, your relationship with your parents or your your partner or your kids or and so politics what, what, by the way. Yes, uh, and what you see is always society, is usually religion. one of two things. He said that people are not forgiving, you fuck them once and then it's all it's World War Three. Yeah. Or it's not that they're too forgiving, it's that they're forgiving but without first retaliating. Yeah. You can only forgive after retaliation. Yeah. Otherwise that's not forgiving. That's forgetting. That's negating the problem. That's then you get into yeah. something else. Yeah. So with yourself it's gonna have to be the same thing. But and if I'm good athletes will find retaliation easy. The problem is going to be forgiving, going to, okay, yeah. Having the next session, right. Well. So, because the next session after the slide usually going to be wasted. So, normally, you're supposed to have 10. Now, you can have eight reps because you're truly tired. You didn't give up. You're really tired. That's not the same. So, you go after the slide where you're murdered. You do, you get eight instead of 10. Now, you're pissed again. Now, you retaliate again. No, now you're not retaliating. Is your body is capable of an eight. That's a green flag. It gave you what it could. But it's, it says 10 on the program. So now you're pissed. So now what do you do? You retaliate against your body. But you're not retaliating because your body gave you a green flag. So you're supposed, yeah. you're supposed to accept that. But because now you're in that pissed mode, you see it as a confrontation. And now you retaliate to something that doesn't exist. Yeah, it's... it's so it's, you see what I mean? Yeah, it's not it, that simple to do. It is, it is a bit the same as kicking your ass when you don't feel like going to the gym versus taking that rest day when you know you need to, yeah. but not per se when it's planned. Yes, exactly. Like some, sometimes you have to listen to what the body says, but you also have to know that you're not quitting. So people are going to say like, how do you know the difference? Yes, that's why it's hard. Well, that's, th- that's where the looking within matters. Like yeah. having conversation with yourself, developing yourself, the developing... Yeah, exactly. That's... That is, I feel like, is the exploration but part. You know, or the if, problem is that, that is that conversation is not in words. True. That conversation is not done True. in words. It's a thing inside that tells you the feeling whether you're tired or quitting. All that is just something inside that cannot be put into words. Yeah. You need to know yourself. Lato said that before me. Yeah. Know thyself is the thing, but not from a world thing. Words, you're just hiding problems. You're justifying yeah. You're just covering all of it. At the end, is like, did you have five reps, yes or no? And you know. Yeah, but that, that's... You know when you quit. I think that's you know. the one of the big parts of why training is such a good self-development. That's yes, such a good um, way to discipline especially yourself. And, yeah. yeah, especially low You want to know if you're, if you're quitting or not. It's important. By the way, discipl- disciplining yourself is, is also resting when needed. Yes. Well, depending on which way you have a tendency to go. Yeah, it is. Uh, it discipline is, is doing the other stuff. It's doing the stuff you, you, you don't it's want to do. It's me doing cardio. <laughs> did you do your cardio already today? Yep, I did yesterday, but I'll do it, I'll do it now. You did yesterday. Good job. Yeah, it's, it's bad for you. Anyway. It um, is bad. It's bad. So, now, I don't want... So, this is a long-term strategy, right? To get strong, takes 10 years and everything. That is not the way we do it when we prep for a competition. So, that's why you have to understand we have three phases oh, of training. Oh, that's also why... why Can I finish? We have three phases of training. We have off-season, we have the prep for the prep of the competition, and the prep of the com- competition. So those are three phases, right? Off-season is when I build the structure. The prep for the prep is when I start to build her strength up with the barbell that we're going to use, right? So we sum it up to 90%-ish, 92%, whenever she gets there. Then we prep for the competition. When we prep for the competition, this becomes a short-term thing. So that strategy does not apply anymore. The strategy we're talking about is off-season and the prep of the prep. The second we enter the prep, which will be eight weeks, now it's a short-term mentality. Now I don't care. Like now it's red flag all the way because numbers have to be done because I need enough times under the barbell that the technique is the correct one, that everything is moving the right way. To a degree, obviously, I'm still going to pay attention. For example, last time she was tired for the competition, it tells me the volume was too high. That being said, she did it. She didn't stop halfway going, oh, I don't feel good. No, because we have eight weeks and you need to perform. Yeah. So now, 
that I, strategy I did, I did is feel like slanted. Shit, but I, I also am very happy that I that I uh, didn't bitch about it and just did what I need to be done. Like because I'm now very, we learn for the next one. I'm I'm very happy. I because. That's the only way to and, learn. And, and that's also that's the lessons I think you learn in sports early is that those moments are usually the most rewarding ones after because it's like not during, <laughs> not during, but who cares? <laughs> Maybe that's for, me. <laughs> no, but uh, that's very important. Who cares? Who cares? About even now? <laughs> for a small, like an eight week block, yeah, for, for an eight week block, because yeah. that's the short term mentality. Now we are in a different strategy. And the strategy, honestly, is a red flag. It's yeah. like I don't care what the next eight weeks are going to be. And if a mistake is made, we'll correct it after, but not during those eight weeks. The, Obviously, short of injuries. We're not, yeah. we, no one wants to get injured. But the point is, some preps will not go well on certain things, like it didn't go well on the squat. That's okay. We keep going. And in the off-season, and most more like the prep of the prep, we will adjust those things. But then, during that eight-week prep for the competition prior, the only thing that matters is the bar moving correctly and at a certain speed. And that's what we're going to focus on. Yeah, and it's, it's after that also, like you said, forgiving yourself, listening to the body. And there's also understanding that there's always a price to pay when you compete. Like yeah. there's, a, there's yes. a big consequence. Yes, yes. It's a very expensive thing to do. So yeah. after that, you have to also uh, get put money back on the credit card and yeah. pay that debt because you can't keep cashing in. But a question that might might occur to, to other people is like, okay, how do you do that then when you don't compete, when you don't have that structure of preparing for something? How do you go past, is it necessary to go past those three stages and have that same strategy? I mean, the yeah, strategy, would, like we said, is applied to everything, but would you still prepare for something or yeah, how would you go I would take, yeah, yeah, once a year, if not twi twice a year, I would do a four week block and see if my training is working. Are you making progress? Yeah. By the way, if you're getting that so, for example, if you're getting that 35 pounds per year on each lift, 20 on the bench, right? Let's say that puts you at 90 pounds on your total per year. Don't change anything. It's working. Yeah. It's working. Yeah. If you put 100 pounds on your, on your um, total every year, don't change. Don't change anything. There's absolutely no reason. Now, the only thing I would say is this, this, there's two types of athletes. They are the athletes who love training off season and the athletes who love to compete. If you're an athlete who loves to compete, you cannot go two years without competing. Yeah. That's just not a good thing. If you're someone who loves training, you can go two years without training. But the problem is just without competing with you. Yeah, without competing, sorry. But when you get to a competition, then your money is gonna go because now you haven't trained yourself to compete. So um, the athletes who loves competing will not be able to train hard enough without a competition at some point so that's going to be a problem the other athlete which is me likes to train all the time when there's a competition get a little that was my problem with jiu -jitsu, get very stressed out yes autism and everything but still i also did not train well for competition i'm so balanced me i'm so like game theory that when the short-term mentality needed to be there to compete i didn't have it you you're, that's when i did a coach i, 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 I think did a coach. yeah you are in a way, as um, you're not necessarily a confrontational person in that sense, no. you're very, um, you're actually very kind in that sense. That, you don't that look like, because yeah. you don't look I, I like it. You look at me when every time you don't are look you like that. that no, <laughs> God, we're not gonna go back. Like we're not gonna go back to this yeah. uh, conversation. But I, I was just mentioning that you are very forgiving person, not always as confrontational. Too much, actually. Yeah, but too, I like to learn to be more confrontational especially when I wanted to compete in strongman, because that short-term mentality, I don't have enough of it when it's needed. And it is needed sometimes. So again, that's another arch, is you can't just be long-term. Sometimes you gotta be short-term because the sure. shit has to work. So you don't like competing, I agree. That's probably why you should compete. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. love competing, good, but you need to compete because otherwise you won't train hard yeah. enough. Yeah. So then, then create a four-week cycle at your gym, grab a friend, have a, I have a competition was, on the day yeah, or like, something. I, mean. there's, I think there's deep truth. Was that something that Greg Glassman said where it is like you always need to do the things you suck at? Or Everybody said it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Goggins, David Goggins if, yeah. is the number one. It's like, Even it's though really, all he does him is competing, which is a little bit too much. But, but my really point the is thing there, there's you different don't types do. of competition. Though. That's also true. Like For example, like you know what I did well in Jiu-Jitsu is I went to spar with legends. 
I would go there and spar with a guy for 10, 15 minutes, not in front of everybody, because I think that's what really killed me in competition is the is people watching. Oh, yeah. But that that's a very artistic thing, or maybe just me, whatever. No, um, no, no, I can understand that it's had, something that's uh, me. I, I spar against Gokor Shibishayo, which you don't know who that is, but he was a god of the leg locks before. Uh, he was a world champion judo guy, and standing up, you uh, and he, they invented. They were the first one really went deep into the leg locks as a system, as a group. They were all their leg lockers. But him, he had really a school of that. And I wanted to test my half guard. And then I I kept him in it for a good eight, nine minutes. And I could sweep him. And then he got me on a knee bar at some point. And I tapped right away because those guys were famous for breaking everything. But the point mm. was, me, I was excited about spying with him, not never scared. On the contrary, I was like, oh my god, this is like learning pottery from a, a master. Uh, that's, from a gardener, no, but, from, really I don't cool, care. Yeah. Like, show me the best gardener in the world. I will listen to him talk about plants for six hours, and I will try my. I love that. The competition, like the medal. My problem with competition is winning the medal makes no sense to me. So that, that was always yeah. my problem. That was always my problem. I just looked at it wrong, but that's because I didn't train toward that short-term mentality, that is extremely necessary for athletes. Well, and I, I believe honestly for everybody. You, you have to make progress. Again, if you make progress all the time, yeah, there's probably no need to, for a competition. But it's good to test once in a while, at least a friendly competition at the gym. Like, it doesn't have to be all the time, but, you know, once in a while with your friends, are we making or progress? Yeah, or, like, like even, like, it's, it's like a good thing, for example, I mean. doing the Open. It can be, like, if you are more towards conditioning, like, it can be very, very terrifying for people. Like, it's even if it's in your gym, the score does you don't have to... Like, it's wrecking people. Yeah, I, I know. Like, um, but but it, I think it's because it's too or, long and it's a comparison to others. Yeah, like, yeah. I would... Um, or I, you was, can even organize, like, for example, you do like a training session with like four or five friends and you're going to max out on yeah, the Yeah, but bed you and, know what I like with strongman and powerlifting is the movements are the same. So from one year to the next, you know. Yeah. When I you agree. do the open, what if the open doesn't favor you? Yeah, that's true. Like you're gonna do poorly, like you get three workouts in a row and they they all suck for you. Yeah, that's then true. you're gonna do poorly, but that doesn't mean you're not better than last year. True. Because last year those were good workouts true. for you. So that's always been the issue is um, CrossFit puts forward a system that because remember Greg Lastman, the reason there was a nasty girls is because then we retest those numbers. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. But we don't do that anymore. True. True. Like the the entire point of Greg Lastman was to test. The open does it test since you guys make a different workouts every year? So when they retest the workouts from before, that's great. Yeah. Because then we see if people have progressed on that. Yeah. But when you make up new workouts, what are you testing since it's not the same combination? Yeah. So it would be more interesting if you were more like a conditioning person to test uh, Helen, Helen, the girls, basically the yes, the, every the, time. the nasty yeah. girls. And if you're a lifter, of course, like going off of numbers, choosing lifts. And, and understand they can do it in competition because, like, for example, on Fran, everybody's going to be in within three seconds. Yeah. So it'd be a nightmare. But honestly, like, for me, it would be like we do the 12 uh, girls' workouts every year and we see if you made progress on yeah. that because that will test pretty much everything. Interesting. That would be a good test of yeah. your fitness. Otherwise, what are we testing? Yeah. Anyway, so, so that's a little bit more complex. but. I, I wanted to say that I don't think necessarily the short term is bad. It is not bad. It is necessary as well. But short term, by definition, is short. Yeah. So it's not a long term strategy yeah, yeah. that is valid. And most interactions you, you're going to have in life are long term sure. strategies. Couple, you're trying to stay with, the, with that training, relationship with people, work. You're trying to stay in it as long as you can. So therefore, it's a long-term strategy. And here and there, it's going to be punctuated with short-term strategy to get the most to cash the credit card. Yeah. But understand, you're cashing in the credit card. So therefore, at some point, yeah. you have to go back to prior and go back to that long-term mentality, which is very hard because naturally, you will favor one over the other. But both are necessary. So discipline is to do the other one. Yeah. That's why I forced myself to compete, even though like in Jiu-Jitsu, I hated it. But and I should have competed more. So. Yeah, and until I learned to not hate it so much. That's, that's also probably that why the burn the question was so good for for yeah. you because it was that yeah. conf t teaching yeah. that confrontation yes. to you, right? And, it, and, it and so for me, it was look in the mirror. What do you see? Yeah. And I needed to do that because naturally I would not otherwise. If I don't create 
instances of confrontation, I would easily never go there. Not your case. No, I'm the opposite yeah. when it comes to that. I you, go you there way too much. Yeah, like, exactly. for example, for me, like, uh, like the Q training, for example, did for me more the opposite. Or like, um, yeah, that's the reason. Don't overdo it. Just yeah, come down. Yeah. To me, when to learn to run uh, longer distances or do air than longer distances was for me the thing I think that benefited me the most uh, when it comes to that because I, I like when I, before I started doing. Um, lifting i couldn't run 800 meters yeah. as a sprinter because i just i would get like a panic attack yeah well, because you would sprint <laughs> for which you don't want to do. but okay. i mean to me that i mean the grinder question was good for different reasons it was yeah, to each his own. but um it was it was good for me for so many reasons but it yeah. was uh i think what you talk about really training that that other side for me it was the the cue training like even 10 minutes on the airline that was uh is oh, it took us a while to get you there yeah it took it took me a while to get there but that's the forgiving that yeah that's the forgiving and also like the uh, long-term the way, thinking which is a good point um, uh, q I'm not, I'm not a forgiving person per se so it was <laughs> it's something that i always have to work on because i am really but not you know the q minus one will show you that yeah it because is because me for example i'll go lower yeah i won't go over because i'm too forgiving. Yeah, I'm always like, fuck it. Like, I'll just blow yeah, a casket. Were, yeah, no, yeah. because you find anger and then that makes you blow yeah. a casket. Me, I can't find it, so I'm always below. Yeah. And then I need to find a reason to push always, yeah. which is why I hate cardio, because I need to find a reason and I still haven't. Yeah. I know I have to do it, but every time I'm like, so why am I doing this again? And and that's the Q minus one for me yeah. is 10 minutes of why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Yeah, and for in, in a different way the the heavy lifting was also is also teaching me that a lot because of the fact that in lifting is not exploding as as people think that heavy lifting is exploding but actually you it's only it is not it is only in very specific moments and even yeah. on the deadlift on the max deadlift no, you, you know, never want to go there because it's no. always about actually finding um uh, that that peace within the storm like i don't know how you say that again like yeah. uh like the, the eye piece, of the storm. The, the eye of the storm that's really what lifting is that's exactly what i could never do like think rationally in a moment of chaos where yeah. uh, just exploding Remind yourself the steps yeah. yeah and that that i think disciplining your mind is really what i i had to do with lifting but i find lifting so fascinating too Mm -hmm. so it, it, it forces you to stay within it but do it correctly which is something that anyhow so um but I think it, it is important to mention that video that you also sent to me. All right, right. There's a video out there on YouTube that explains game theory. I'll, I'll put the title. I'll put the put, link. Put the link in the, in the description. Like for, it, it was really cool because you'll see. It is, um, even yeah. I understood it. It is very simply explained. Yeah. So I think all of you will understand it. But are you saying the podcast will not? No, I know. But like, there's like lights and images, which is good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there's like <laughs> folding pictures when you open and everything. <laughs> It's very nice. There's diagrams and colors. Like when you open it the book, is that it? And everything pops up. It and, sounds, yeah. it sounds like colors and lights, which makes me understand it Green, better. Right. Yes, you understand, right? Yeah. I will put the link. Listen, into the there's no shame in it. It's more of a visual way of learning. Yeah, okay, like learner. I mean, I'll just. Uh -huh. Right. Anyway, so I put the link in the description, <laughs> and next week we get into vessel pressing, and I'm very excited about that. Cool. Alrighty, Bye, everybody. Ciao.